in Zambia, there was um, a lady that um, had one finger cut. She was trying to close the door. And then she banged the door on one of her fingers. And the finger caught a part of it and fell on the ground. In her pain and confusion, she ran to the hospital. And she said, I need help. When they saw the hand, they said, where is the part that cut off? And she said, it's in the house. They sent somebody to the house and picked it up. They said they couldn't sew it again because it's taking some time. Then she went to another hospital, a Chinese hospital. They told her the same thing. She was very sorrowful. And then she came back home. She spoke to the sister leading the women there, the wife of the pastor. And eventually, they encouraged her. Don't just say it's not sickness. It's just that that finger is caught. And eventually, we're having a program here at the headquarters. There is power at the headquarters. I was transmitting the program like we're doing tonight. And she said, here is my finger. It is deformed. It is caught. By the way, the other part that was caught on the ground had been thrown and flushed away in the toilet. All she did was to point that finger to the screen. As we said, the final amen, the finger grew back. If that is happening, if that is happening, far away, when we cannot see face to face, how about you today here, a miracle is coming your way. In Zambia, a brother went to take a son of a neighbor to the meeting. That son was totally blind, nine years of age. And eventually we prayed, like we're going to pray tonight. The Lord is going to take you higher. After the prayer, it appeared that nothing happened, but something has happened. And to you, something is happening. They got back home. Uh, in the morning, the following day, the boy got up and could see everything clearly. Now, blind eyes are opening. And by the grace of God, if you are blind tonight, sight miraculously. It's coming to you in Jesus' name. We left there, then I went to Burkina Faso. In Burkina Faso, I got there before the meeting. And uh, before the meeting, I had to visit the local churches. And some of the members were waiting in their churches. It wasn't to preach. It wasn't to pray. It was just to see them and see those local churches. But we had a sister there that was paralyzed, having crutches. And she sat at the edge. And when all the other people stood up to wave and to greet me, she couldn't do that because she was totally paralyzed. As I came into the church building, I waved at her and said, God bless you. Like I'm waving to you now and I'm saying, God bless you. You are blessed tonight in Jesus' name. And so I got to the front of the church and I said, I'm happy to be here. It's wonderful and all that. I proceed is starting tonight. It's not time for preaching now. It's not time for prayer now. Come in the evening and then the Lord will touch you. And then I said bye-bye. I was going out. As I was going out, because she was paralyzed and she was sorrowful, I felt that I would encourage her. I said, my sister, you'll be all right. And then I took hold of her hand and said, God bless you. And as I came out, all the other people ran out just to say bye-bye. And she was the only one remaining in the hall. And then she said, how is it? I'm not able to stand up. I'm not able to go and greet the pastor bye-bye. But the pastor said, God bless you. And said, you'll be all right. All of a sudden, she threw the sticks away. And she got up. And she got up. And she wanted to catch uh, the, the car so that she too can wait to me. And she started walking and then started running. 
the Lord healed her completely. In the evening, when we were to give testimony, the lady came up and uh, the brother going to interview her said, but you are not sick, you don't have any problem. She said, you don't know me. And the one in the afternoon, the pastor said, God bless you, and now I'm working very well. If that is happening to them over there, something is coming your way tonight. From Burkina Faso, we were in Togo. In Togo, there was uh, this uh, woman, she had cancer. And the cancer was in the final stage. It was like she was going to pass off any time. And then that night, we prayed. As we were praying, she began to vomit blood. And they gave her a bowl, and she vomited much blood into that bowl. As we said the final amen, then the vomiting stopped. She got up completely well, totally made whole. Your healing will be permanent in Jesus' name. From Burkina Faso, now I was in the uh, Benin Republic, and there was uh, this a young man, 22 years of age. He was born with a part of the body missing. That is, he was not complete. And he was feeling ashamed because it was an obvious problem in their family. All the other children, all the other people, every part of them complete. But in his own case, it was just like that. And then we prayed and said in the name of Jesus, whatever miracle you need, get it right now. Before we opened our eyes, a creative miracle had taken place. And that part that was missing from birth had been created instantaneously. Tonight is your night. I said tonight is your night. There was a woman that had big goiter on the neck. And uh, so we rounded up, and then I said, let us pray. And we, we closed our eyes. Before we opened our eyes, that goiter had vanished away. And so the power of God is at work. And that power is coming to you tonight in Jesus' name. Is that Jesus is looking at the way you are thinking. He's looking at the analysis you are making about your problem. And then he stands in front of you and he beholds you. He looks at you and he says unto you, With men, this is impossible. But with God, but with God, all things are possible. In fact, the way God works instantaneously is almost surprising almost unbelievable i told you about the woman that had cancer in togo another woman came there uh, to that togo program and this woman had been abandoned by the husband this woman having children the husband left her and left the children she was suffering she became angry she became bitter and it was like she wanted even whatever will happen because she had been fed up of life. It had taken three years and the husband had been away and the husband will not even contact her or give any money or send anything. They were totally, completely separated although not divorced. And eventually she was brought to the meeting. At the meeting, as I was speaking, I said, whoever has offended you, forgive. Then she began to think about that, forgive. She remembered her husband. I said, that man, how can I forgive him? I've been suffering this way, suffering this way. These children are suffering. How can this be? And then eventually I said again, God will give you the grace. He will give you the grace. Anybody there I said, he will give you the grace. What you think is impossible for you is possible with God. It will happen tonight in Jesus' name. And so while I was uh, saying that God will give you the grace, will forgive, and everything will be all right. And eventually she said, oh Lord, help me. He will help you. To forgive this man, 
and in her heart she forgave but she saw that her telephone was uh, kind of vibrating because she put it on silence when we finished the prayer she looked at the telephone during that time of preaching the message and during that time of having the grace to forgive the husband God had touched the husband where the husband was I said God touched the husband where the husband was and the husband had called her five times within that short time of preaching the message how many times did I say the husband called her five times and then she called the husband back. Remember, for three years, they have not been talking. Hatred, bitterness, anguish, anger, everything. But within that time, the husband called five times, and she called. And then uh, the wife said, I saw your missed call. He said, yes, my, my wife, where are you? I want to see you now. I want to come home. I'm sorry. And she became to apologize. To call a long story short, Within that period, they reconciled. And the man said, sorry all that the woman has lost, brought money, brought everything. Now they are living happily together. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Your problems are solved tonight. Your mountain is taken away tonight. Something is happening already. Even before we pray, something is happening already. You will be the recipient of God's miracle power tonight in Jesus' name.